Yeah, just carry off. Stretch that. We're good. You have your water if you need it. Nine, four, three, two, one. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Boker Tov. Uh, for those of you who are visitors uh, to this site and to this temple virtually, my name is Rabbi Brian Zimmerman, and uh, you are joining Bethel Congregation. To our members who are joining us today, we hope you're holding up well at home on this last Shabbat of August, on the ninth day of Elul, and that means we are three weeks till Rosh Hashanah, the start of the new year. But today we have another kind of fresh start. Today, Emily and Dakota are having their bar and bat mitzvah, or as we say in plural, b'nai mitzvah, for a boy and a girl together, we use that form. And they join together to become children of the commandments, although really sons and daughters of the commandments, as they take their place here in Judaism. They have been working for a very long time. And if you are family or friends of the Florsheims, we want to say hello as well. You will see Kimberly and Henry and the rest of the family later on during the service. Although at some point our wonderful temple streamers will pull back and you'll see them here. Uh, and you'll also see in just a moment in our chapel, Cantor Monica Odeski, who has been their tutor, who has been working with them all year and then some, teaching them prayers first in person and then remotely. And she is with us in the chapel and they'll be bouncing between our sanctuary and our chapel. And a little later in the service, she'll be with us to be with Dakota and Emily as they read from the Torah on this Saturday morning. Um, if you are joining us um, for the first time, and I should say if you are joining us um, for a Jewish service for the first time, part of becoming a bar or bat mitzvah, a son or a daughter of the commandment, is not just turning a certain age. It is, we hope, ideally showing that you have um, mastered the skills we would hope for a Jewish adult, being a teacher, and both of them will be teaching some ideas from their Torah portion, reading from a Torah scroll, which we'll talk about a little later. The Torah scrolls that have been written the same way for thousands of years, and they'll be reading them as girls have been doing for a hundred years and boys have been doing for many hundreds of years, standing in this place, reading the same words that other Jewish men and women read during the year. So they become teachers to our Jewish community. And our hope is that if they were called upon to lead or chose to lead, they'd be able to do what a young man or woman could do as an adult Jew. And they can, I know, because I've been in their rehearsals. Um, so we're really happy to have them. And um, you'll probably hear me say it again later. But if you're not one of their close friends, you may not realize that they have made the pilgrimage or uh, the trek from Wichita Falls so that they could be a part of this Fort Worth community, so they could be part of a larger Jewish community. I could say the irony is today that uh, everybody else is under quarantine, but I can assure you because of technology that you are bringing help to many, many, many people this Saturday morning as you lead them in prayer here from the sanctuary they miss. And so I talked about becoming um, a Jewish adult. Um, and uh, one of the ways we do that is with a prayer shawl. Now, I should say that you can feel free just to listen. But if you wish to follow along with the actual prayers uh, for our members or anyone else, you should know that on our Friday Shabbat e-blast, and if you deleted it, you can go back and get it out of trash, you will see at the very bottom every week if you'd like to follow along in the prayer book. And there is a link. And if you click on that link, uh, you will get a choice, and you would go to Shabbat or weekday. I know this is all going quickly. And you would click on there, and it would say a repaginated version. And I promise, if you do that, it will make complete sense to you. It's very obvious. And you will go to this prayer book on your computer, phone, iPad, uh, laptop, whatever you're using, and you'll see a little box at the bottom with page numbers. So you can feel free to type into any point. We're going to be starting on page 290 in our prayer book. Uh, actually, 289. Um, I'm one page ahead of myself. One of the ways that we show our connection through generations is through the tali. And the fringes of the tali represent the mitzvot, the lifestyle, the obligations of Judaism. And so 
when a young man or woman gets their tallit for the first time and wraps themselves, lehita teif batsitsi, when they wrap themselves in these fringes, they are symbolically and literally wrapping themselves in a Jewish life. And so we're going to ask um, your parents to come up. Your mom's going to present the tallit, and it's on 289 if you wish to follow along. And Emily and Dakota are going to receive this prayer shawl as they lead us in the prayer. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitzyanu b'mito tov v'tzivanu lahita tev v'batzit sit. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitzyanu b'mito tov v'tzivanu lahita v'batzit sit. And now as we turn to page 290, we come to the beginning of our service, these words of prayer that come to us from the Torah that remind us whatever our challenge is, how lucky we are to be in this place and to be with you and to see the continuation of Judaism to another generation. Cantor Monica Odesky, their tutor and a member of this congregation, uh, will be leading us in Matovu. Matovu. Oh, Alecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. Matovu, oh, Alecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. We turn to 298, and there we see from the Talmud a passage that speaks of our daily obligations to the community, to one another, to God. If you're at home and have it, you can feel free to read along. Elu divarim. These are the things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world while the principle remains in the world to come. They are honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study morning and evening, dealing graciously with guests, visiting the sick, providing for the wedding couple, accompanying the dead for burial, being devoted in prayer, and making peace among people. But the study of Torah encompasses them all. We turn to page 312. The formal next section of our service begins with this transition prayer, the Chatzik Kaddish, that prepares us for our call to worship. Yit gadao ve yit kadashme laba bel madi vrachute ve amnech mochute be chaye khun u vyome khun u chaye de robe Israel ba gala ba gala u vizma karib vimeru amen yeheshme raba me varach le aulam lo me amaya Yibarach, Yibarach, be Yishtabach, via Paar, vid Rama, vid Nase, vid Hadar, vid Hale, vid Hala, Shemeda Kudisha, Rehu, the Elam in Kobir Hatav, Shirata, Tush Behat Hav, Nehemata, Dami Rat, Bilma, Vimeru, Amen. And from your homes, if you wish to rise, you can. You can also sit and listen as we continue. Baruch et Adonai Hamevorach. Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Va'en. Baruch et Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Yotzer Oru Continue on the next page. We read responsibly. The world is sunlight, restoring the soul, rejoicing the heart, bringing the light to the eyes, more welcome than gold, a Torah from heaven. 
I have no light to give the morning. My Torah, my special human gift is words. As I bring my words forth from silence, welcome them. You who redeems the sun from darkness. Baruch Ata Adonai, Yotzer Hamora. We read together on page 315. God of all creation, you are blessed with each soul's breath. Your greatness and goodness fill the world. Knowledge and understanding surround your glory. Holiest are you among the holy, seated in glorious splendor, radiant in purity and justice, bestowing loving kindness. In knowledge and understanding, you created the heavenly lights, giving them strength and power to bring light into the world. Full of splendor, they radiate greatness. The world is warmed by their flames. We rejoice in their comings and goings. We reflect in the will of their creator. Glory and, and honor, honor they give to you, glowing praises to your home. You, you call to the sun, and it gives forth light. light. You set, set the patterns the of the moon. You were honored throughout the heavens with songs of glory and praise. The next page, 316. <laughs> Chem la gdola, vitera, hamalta lenu. Bavur abotenu, vemotenu, shebat huvecha, shebat huvecha. Bad lam dim, huvechaim, kenti honenu. Ut lam denu ham rachem rachem alenu Viten vili benu lehavin ul haskil Lishmo alil mod ul hamed Lishmo velasot ul kayem Et kol divrei tamud toratecha we read, we read responsibly on page 317. O oh God, inspiration and guide for all. You have spoken in thousands of tongues for us to hear in every land and every age. Your ch children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one unfair and humanity. We give, we give thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sages of Israel, and joyfully, we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live in our minds, and their passion for righteousness stir, in, stir our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of our truth. Baruch Ata Adonai, Abocher B'Yamo Yisrael, Yahava. And on the next page. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Baruch Shem Kavod Mahuto Le'olam Va'ed. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Mahuto Le'olam you may be seated. Vea hafta e darunayo heha, the corn of Abeha, Ukona Sheha, Ukome of Deha. Vea you, hot of our rain, ha eva. A sheer on a he met Saveha. I am of Abeha, the Shina Tom, the Vanerha. Vishita, 
Sing the song of men and women, joined in understanding and respect. The song of God's miracles, an earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more, the song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. As we prepare for the next prayer, we are at one of several turning points in our service. The first, as you were listening, was those early morning prayers of appreciation, reminding us of what we owe our community, reminding us we owe one another, prayers of thanksgiving, then the affirmation of our faith, the Shema in one God, and this prayer we just listened to, which is uh, the story of the Jews crossing the sea, so grateful for freedom, as we'll find out when Namely and Dakota read from the Torah, the Jews don't stay completely grateful for long. But at this moment, they are so grateful to be free. And so at this, this high point in our service, we go up another step. We come to Tefillah, the central prayer section of our service, which is really a series of prayers you're going to hear them read. Prayers that talk about how we find our way into God. Prayers that talk about our connection to our mothers and fathers, all the way back to the first Jews. And prayers that ask for peace and strength. And so we begin this whole section with the simple but challenging words, God, help us to find the words amidst the noise to even know how to reach you. And so now we are led in the next section of our service, known as Tefillah, the prayer. Please rise for the call to prayer. Adonai sefer taktiv tach ufi ya gita hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu b'Elohei avotenu v'imotenu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yitzchak Elohei Yaakov Elohei Sara Elohei Rika Elohei Rachel b'Elohei Leah Ha'el Hagadol Ha'yibor v'Hanurah El Elyon Gomer Hasadim Tovim Bekane Hakol Bezocher Haste Avot B'Imahot Umevi Geula Livne Bnehem Laman Shemo Beahava Melech Hazer Mushia Makin Baruch Ata Aronai Makin Avraham Pezra Sera Ata Gibor Leilam Aronai Mechaye Hakol Ata Lushia Mechaye Haim Bechaset Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabbi Somech Noflim Verofe Cholim Umati Rasarim Umichaye, 
me haye a a ko. You are the open door that beckons me in. Peeking around the door frame, I begin to enter into your glory. You move me forward, O eternal, to step beyond self-made boundaries. Lift my foot over the threshold, that I might abide with you in the house of the eternal. I found my questions waiting to be posed. They fill me with wonder. Sit with me, eternal teacher. Encourage my seeking. As I fill my hours with your mitzvot, so shall I be filled. Send me through your doors, stretching up to honor your name, sharing out this wonder, enriching myself in the givings. Baruch atah Adonai, mechaye hakol. Nikadesh et shimcha ba'olam, ki shim shimat shimo tovish me marom, kakatuva ya nebecha, vikaraze zebe amar, kadosh kadosh kadosh, adonai tsevaut, melochora. Adir adir enu Adonai adon enu mahadir shim chab choharetz baruch evur Adonai mim komo echadu Eloheinu hu avinu hu malkeinu hu moshienu behu yashmienu. Zach nzachim kedushat cha nakdish v'shiv cha cha Eloheinu mi pinu lo yamush le'olam va'ed Baruch atah Adonai ha'el akadosh. You may be seated. We are on page three twenty eight. The bottom of the page. The people of Israel shall keep Shabbat, observing Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. It is a sign for all time between me and the people of Israel. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day God ceased from work and was refreshed. Vishameru vene Yisrael vene Yisrael et hashabat lasot et hashabat letorotam berit olam beni uvein bene Yisrael otile olam. Beni uvein b'nei Yisrael otile olam v'shameru v'nei Yisrael v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la-asot et ha-shabbat ne-dorotam berit olam Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai et hashemayim ve'et haaretz. Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai et hashemayim ve'et haaretz. V'shameru b'nei Yisrael, b'nei Yisrael et hashabat la'asot. Nera Shabbat ledorotam berit olam uvayom hashvi uvayom hashvi shavat vayinafash uvayom hashvi uvayom hashvi. Shabbat vayinafash, the 
The meaning of Shabbat is to celebrate time rather than space. Six days a week, we live under the tyranny of things of space. On Shabbat, we try to become attuned to a holiday holiness and time. It is a day on which we are called upon to share in with what is eternal in time, to turn from the results of creation to the mystery of creation, from the world of creation to creation of the world. Baruch Atarunai Mikadesh HaShabbat. And on the next page, 330. We read responsibly on the bottom of page 330. On this Shabbat day, as you graciously receive our prayers, help us to hear your call. Grant us enough health to fulfill our duties and the compassion we need to attend to others. Teach us Just humility, humility that, we that we may perceive our own faults. faults. And grant us Just with wisdom to be giving forever forgiving to, of others. Give us the courage to be true to our highest selves and the charity to see the best in those around us. Give us patience enough not to become discouraged, hope enough to overcome all fears for the future, and faith enough to know your presence. O oh, source of blessing, look with favor upon us. May our offerings be acceptable to you. We praise you, Adonai, whom alone we serve in reverence. Baruch atah Adonai, shechotcha, levaycha, biyera, na'avod. We continue on page 334, O oh God, with this prayer of peace. Peace, we pray for our city, our country, Israel, the world, peace and wholeness with the words of Sim Shalom. Sim Shalom, Tova Uvracha, Chen Vaches, Rachamim, Rachamim, Alenu. Ve aqua Yisrael, ve aqua Yisrael amecha. Bacheinu yotzneinu kulanu kechad. Ve opanecha, ki ve opanecha natata lanu. Adonai Eloheinu sim shalom, sim shalom. Tova uvracha. Chen v'chesed v'rachamim v'rachamim aleinu V'hako Yisrael, v'hako Yisrael, amecha Let's take a moment wherever we are. Maybe you're looking at the sanctuary. Maybe you're at home also staring out the window or at a table filled with the clutter of lives, whatever it is, clear that clutter for a minute, even if you can't really move it. And just take a moment for silent prayer. Take a moment on this Shabbat to reflect, to think about the inspiration of these two young people who are leading us and teaching us. Take a moment to think about all this Shabbat day means as we take a moment for our own silent reflection.
We come to Seder Kriyata Torah, the Shabbat the service for the reading of Torah on page 362. And as your parents come up uh, to be here with you, a word about the Torah for those who are at home and have never seen a Torah scroll. A Torah scroll is written on parchment using ink and feather in the same way Torah scrolls have been written for a couple thousand years. Sewn together by a scribe, the writing of a Torah can take a year a year of work every day in the life of individual. The letters and words are in the same way they were with from the first scrolls. Now what you may not know is that the, le- the system of letters developed before the system of vowels in Hebrew. People knew how to read, but they had no system of vowels yet to know how to do that. And so to read the Torah the way Jews have always read it, is imagine if you were reading from an important book, handwritten on a big day of your life, with all the vowels gone. And so uh, Emily and Dakota are reading from the Torah in the way that Jews have read for thousands of years. And they take their place in that place. But they're also receiving their Torah from their parents, from all the generations that I represent. And so as Cantor Monaco Odesky leads us in the prayers to take out the Torah, in a moment, you will see them pass the Torah through the generations. And so they'll be passing not just a book. They'll be passing all their hopes and prayers, their aspirations, the struggles of those who came before them, everything that brought them to this day. And when they hand that scroll to you, they are handing everything they wish for you and everything they know you are going to carry with love and care and the genuineness of your heart. So Cantor Monica is going to lead us in the prayers for taking out the Torah from the Ark. In kamocha v'alohim Adonai v'ein kamahasecha malchutecha malchut kol amim u'memshaltecha bechol dor v'ador Adonai melech Adonai malach Adonai imloch le'olam v'ahed Adonai uz le'amo yiten Adonai yevarech er amo v'ashalom Ki metzion tetze And now your parents are passing the Torah to you from generation to generation. Shenatan Torah Torah Baru Shenatan Torah Torah Lehamo Yisrael Bigdushato Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Gadol Shemo Gadlul Adonai Iti Uramem Hashemo Yachdav Lecha Adonai Agadula Be'agevura Hatiferet Ve'hanetzak Ve'ahor Ki chol ba shamayim uvaretz, ki chol ba shamayim uvaretz. Lecha Adonai, hamam lacha, 
As Emily and Dakota prepare to read from Torah, their tutor, Cantor Monaco Desky, is coming on over. And uh, for those of you following at home, I just need to let you know that uh, the Torah portion we are reading from is Baha'u'llotecha. And Baha'u'llotecha is in the book of Numbers, chapter 11. They prepare to read Torah. The actual order of the reading Torah develops pretty late in Judaism when they decided to use the day of giving Torah, Simcha Torah, which occurs in a month, to begin and end the Torah again in order. Until then, people read the Torah on different cycles. They prepared uh, to read the Torah a couple months ago. And they're reading it today. We didn't get to read that portion then. So it's been waiting to be heard from us. The story of the manna and the journey of the Israelites. And they're going to read that for us now as we prepare for our service. And um, you can, should you wish, they will be reading in English at the end. But should you wish to follow along, you can pull up a phone and you can go Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And you'll have the Hebrew and English of our Torah portion. Again, the book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. For our first aliyah to the Torah, we're going to be calling up some good friends who are uh, remote but excited to be here with us. And if you're just going to give me one second, um, I am... I had this up, but now it isn't, so I apologize. Uh, I am... Nope. Yes, here we go. Thank you. Um, so for our first Aliyah, we are calling up Jennifer and Andrew Siegel, your good, good friends, and they are going to be leading us in the blessing before the reading of the Torah, which can be found in your prayer books on page 368, and they're joining us right now. Baruch Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim, v'natam lanu et torato, baruch atarunai, notein ha'torah. And now we're ready for the first aliyah to the Torah. Vayhi ha'am kamito ho'nanim, Rabbi Osnei Adonai, Vaishma Adonai, Vayichar Apo, Vativar Bam, Eish Adonai, Vatochal, Bixe Hamachane, Vayitzak Ha'am Al Moshe, Vayit Paleo Moshe, Al Adonai, Vatishka Ha'eish. Vayikra Shem Hamakom Hahu Tabera Kiva Ara Vam E Shalonai Vahasaf Su Fasher Bakir Bo Hitavu Tabera Vayashuvu Vayivku Gam Bene Israel Vayomeru Mi Achilenu Vasar Zaharnu et hadaga asher nochal b'mitzrayim chinam et hakishuim ve'et ha'avatichim ve'et hechatzir ve'et hafsalim ve'et hashumim. Hashumim and we baruch atah Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, v'chayei olanu natavet duchenu, baruch atarnai, notein ha-torah. Amen. 
And now we can send you with the second aliyah of the Torah, Shani. We call up your parents, Esther and Baruch, to lead from us for the Torah, from the Torah. Baruch Baruch Asher barak banu mikol ha'amin v'natan lanu et torato baruch ata Adonai notein ha'torah. Amen. Ve'ata nafshenu yevesha in kol bilti ahamon anenu ve'aman kis are God who ve'eno kain hamdolach. Shot to Ha'am Vilak to Vitahanu Varechaim O Dahu Bamdaha Uvishlu Baparor Basu Oto Ugot Hayatamo Kitam Lishad Hashamen Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu Torah emet, V'chayyalam nata v'kotenu, Baruch atah Adonai, Noten ha-Torah. Amen. And for Shlishi, the third aliyah of the Torah, Yamdu likro et ha-Torah, we call up Darona bat Esther v'baruch, and Yehuda ben Esther v'baruch. Baruch Haman alai, Vaishma Moshe et ha'am, Bochech l'mish bechotav, Ish l'fetach ahalo, Vayahar af Adonai mi'od, Uvene Moshe ra, Vayomer Moshe el Adonai, Lema hare ota le abdacha, Lema lo matsati, Chain be enecha, La soon et masa, Kol ha am haze alai. Baruch ata adonai, Elohenu malakalam. Asher natan lanu Torah emet v'haye olam nata b'tochenu baruch ata Adonai notein haTorah. Amen. All right. And uh, before we put the Torah away, you guys are going to read for us a little bit of that Torah portion in English. You can just sort of roll it to one side. We're not going to put it away yet. And uh, while we're doing that, we want to thank. Uh, Cantor Monica, while well, she's in the same room with us, for all she's done to get you guys ready for this day, how appreciative we are. The people took to complaining bitterly before the Lord. The Lord heard and was incensed. A fire of the Lord broke out against them, ravaging the outskirts of the camp. The people cried out to Moses. Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. That place was named Tabera because a fire of the Lord had broken out against them. The riffraff in their midst felt a gluttonous craving, and then the Israelites wept and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish that we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Now our gullets are shriveled. There is nothing at all, nothing but this mana to look to. Now the mana is, was like coriander seed, and the color was like bedellum. The people would go about and gather it, grind it between milestone or pound it in a mortar, boil it in a pot, and make it into cakes. 
to taste like rich cream. When the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna would fall upon it. Moses heard the people weeping, every clan apart, each person at the entrance of his tent. The Lord was very angry, and Moses was distressed. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your eyes that you could place the burden of this entire people upon me? Now we're going to prepare to address the Torah, and those prayers are on page 370 and then 374. And then after that, we're going to hear some teachings from you about what we do with this Torah portion in this revolt. And, oh, yes, sorry. Take a breath. You guys take a breath too because we want to hear every word as you share with us what to do with this Torah portion and this rebellion. Thank you guys. portion, Moses leads the Israelites through the desert. The Israelites complain about how they only eat manna instead of the great food they had as slaves in Egypt. Manna is like bread that God sent down for 40 days. I think it is reasonable why the Israelites complained about only eating manna. Eating only one food for 40 days could get tiring. Unfortunately, I can relate to how the Israelites were acting. Whenever my siblings choose to eat taquitos for dinner, I get upset and complain to my parents because I do not like taquitos. I feel like that even though it isn't every day for 40 days straight, we eat them all the time and I really get tired of them. Moses did not talk to God until after the Israelites drove him crazy from complaining so much. If Moses were to have talked to God before the complaining drove him crazy, things would have been better off. The Israelites did not show gratitude towards Moses. Gratitude is the state of being grateful for someone or something. In the future, I need to work on having more patience and gratitude, even when it may be something I would not want. My parents provide me with everything I need to have a great life, like food, a nice house, and a good school. I should not let my dislike of constantly having taquitos take away from my gratitude of everything else I do have that I love. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for always pushing me to work hard. Thanks, Dakota, for being there for me every step of the way. Thanks, Cantor Monica, for teaching me the Hebrew letters, my Torah portion, the blessings, and being there for me when I needed help with Hebrew. Thanks, Rabbi, for helping me understand Judaism. Thanks, Miss Judy, for teaching me Hebrew. Thanks, Mr. Jerry, for teaching me the history about Judaism. Thank you, Miss Ross, Miss Okeke, and Miss Franks for supporting me, even when our beliefs may differ. I couldn't have done this without all of you. My Torah portion is about how it was hard for Moses to be a leader. Moses led the Israelites away from the Pharaoh, 
But when the slaves were set free, and while they were walking through the desert, they continuously complained of the long journey and only getting one thing to eat. They wanted to go back where they were slaves, where they got treated horribly, just so they could have better food than they had. After listening to the complaining, Moses had enough. He told God he no longer wanted to be the leader. I think it would have been hard for Moses being the, to be the only leader. I would not have liked to be in Moses' shoes. I don't like talking in front of people or making decisions by myself. It would have been hard for me to lead over 100,000 people. If I had a few of my friends leading with me, it probably would have been easier. Moses was following God's words and doing what he thought was right for all of the people, just to have them complain to him. It probably got easier on him after God gave him some others to lead with him. It was just too much for one man to do alone. Thank you, Cantor Monica, Rabbi Zimmerman, Mr. Jerry, my sisters, Elizabeth, Emily, Jennifer, and Callie, and my parents for getting me where I am today. If it were for you guys, I would not have learned as much as I have. Thank you. Thank you. So well, there are a lot of people I know who would like to congratulate you. I'm sure you're going to hear about it later. They're watching right now. Maybe they're talking to their computers. We can't hear them. But uh, only two people get the special privilege to really talk to you from your family and friends. And those are your parents. Now, maybe they get to talk to you every day. But today, they really get to think about what they want to say as we ask them to share some of their prayers and thoughts with you now. As a parent, you always remember the first time you saw and held each of your children. With the two of you, it was no different. I can still picture the first time I saw and held each of you. I remember the happiness and the joy I felt and continue to feel knowing I was your mom. Your dad and I have treasured every moment watching you grow into the young man and woman standing before us. We know your futures are bright and you can become whatever you set your minds to. We know the past six months have not been easy on you. The quarantine that came from out of nowhere, hearing summer camp had been canceled, and then your B'nai Mitzvah first being rescheduled, and then eventually having to cancel the big party with your friends, all due to the virus. Though these things have been big disappointments, you each handled them calmly, rationally, and with more maturity than many adults that we know. Dakota, your quiet, your quiet presence is an integral part of our family. You've always been good-natured, loving big brother to your sisters, even when I'm at my wit's end with them nagging at each other. Your dad and I are so proud of you, the work you've put into preparing for today, for overcoming your fear of public speaking, and for embracing your faith, even when you and your siblings are the only Jewish kids in the school and the majority of those in town. We know it isn't easy believing differently than your friends, but you have found a way to build a quiet confidence in your beliefs while accepting others of theirs. I pray you continue to build upon this Jewish rite of passage as you move into young adulthood. I love you. Dakota. You may be quiet most of the time, but you speak up when you need to. Whether you're policing your sisters, helping with the dogs, or taking care of chores around the house, we always hear from you when something important is going on. More than all of our other kids, you have embraced the idea of being stuck at home, mostly because you like to hang out in your room and call your friends on your phone while you're playing Xbox games with them at the same time. Remote learning suits you well, and you've dug in and are learning more than you've ever learned before and performing better as well. And that includes your Hebrew lessons. You do anything we ask, and you keep a good sense of humor about it at all times. We are so proud to be with you here as you take this next step. Emily, my mini me. I'll never forget when my mother, forget my mother telling me she hoped I had a child just like me. Well, she got her wish. The difference is your beauty both inside and out, and the way you are truly a grateful person. In discussing your divar with you, I was truly as stumped as you were to think of a time where you were ungrateful. I am so impressed with how you grasped 
Hebrew, even teaching your dad and me. You have a love of Judaism and show a true interest in making sure we wake up on Sunday mornings to drive the four hours round trip for religious school. I love how attending green has become a highlight of your year and that you love lighting Shabbat candles and saying the prayers as much as I do. My prayer for you is to continue to be a light in this world and remember that only light can overcome darkness as only love can overcome hate. I love you. Emily, <laughs> you care about everybody and you want them to be happy. Even if you like to annoy your baby sister Callie on occasion when she bothers you. You love your basketball and cheer groups and you really want to do well in everything that you try. I've seen you grow so attached to your Green Family Camp friends, something I never would have expected when we first moved to Texas. You have truly immersed yourself in your Judaism, especially when it comes to eating half a loaf of your mom's challah every Friday night. Watching you grow up so much over the past few years has been amazing and I'm honored to be your father. So to both of you, today's just the beginning. Please know that your mom and I are immensely proud of you and will always be here for you whenever you need us, no matter how far down the road it is. We love you. And now we listen as we hear a prayer and song offered by your tutor, Cantor Monaco Desky. My eyes filling up with tears. I think of all my hopes and fears. And what I want to say to you, too. This song is my prayer, too. Words that come from the heart enter the heart. The sages tell us words that come from the heart enter the heart. I held you close and let you go. The shoreline for your ebb and flow. My love is like a safety net. Always there with no regret. Words that come from the heart enter the heart. You've got to know the words that come from the heart enter the heart. Smile at people, be kind, take the time to care. Have Shabbat guests learn to cook, travel everywhere. Choose good friends and be a mensch, cherish every day. Be amazed at each new spring, and don't forget to pray. The people that are here today, they'll help you all along the way. You do belong, you have a role in making the broken whole. Words that come from the heart, into the heart you've got to know the words that come from the heart into the heart i really hope that these words which come from our hearts into your heart thank you Before you stand in front of the ark in a moment, I want to thank Cantor Monica for all her help with you and for your parents. Uh, I don't know what next year's bar mitzvah student parents were doing, but I hope they heard your words, those beautiful, beautiful speeches and blessings that came from your heart. I really hope those are an example of just when you can really just share your highest hopes. You guys, you did a great job. Judaism is um, about pilgrimages, and in fact, there is this, I don't want to say tension, but struggle between the lonely person of faith, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, we can go on and on, who discovers a faith and goes off in their own pure way and then realizes they need a community. 
and brings a community together. So we saw with Abraham and Sarah, the Torah tells us, collected many, many people with them. We saw it with Moses, who was born a really and raised uh, not just by his mom, but by the people in, in Pharaoh's palace, and then becomes the leader of this Jewish people he barely knows. And then we see it when the Jews settle in the land of Israel, where they move all over. I mean, if you get to see Israel one day, you will see a country that some people say it's small, but if you're on camel or horse or walking, it would take you many, many days to get through it. And yet, as all the tribes moved all over into different places, including the tribe of Judah, as they moved all over the country and did their own thing, they knew at certain times of the year they had to come back to a central place to be a community. They called it a pilgrimage. They knew there was something powerful in being with other people. Uh, you and your family uh, go on a pilgrimage. Not that we're suggesting Fort Worth is somehow more sacred than Wichita Falls, but they knew that even as you crafted and created your own holy special home with challah and wine and memory and song, they wanted you to be connected to other Jewish people. They wanted you a part of a big community, and they brought you here. And of course, what's interesting is they brought you in pilgrimage here, but with the other people not here, you brought prayer to them. So the people you'd normally be listening to from a long distance and driving to come, and you did drive two hours, those people are at home wishing they could be here. You're bringing them prayer and strength and hope. That's part of Judaism's awareness that people need community. We can't just be alone in a mountain. It's really, really hard. And we talked yesterday a little bit about how, like, you know, when you're the only Jew, you're sort of the ambassador for a Jew. And sometimes it can be fun. Sometimes it's a little lonely. Sometimes it's a little strange when you see what other people are thinking. But your Torah portion reminds us that there's also something dangerous about the crowd. The crowd takes on a voice. Every time the Jews start moving in the desert, something happens. Um, maybe it's building an idol, even though they're not supposed to. Maybe it's revolting against God and refusing to go to the land of Israel. And two people say, we can go now, and the other ten say no. And the voices of the masses get scared, and they have to wander for 40 years. Or maybe it's this strange Torah portion today where they had this manna you talked about. It tasted like what they wanted. There was enough to eat. They had nothing to worry about. And yet the crowd became its own voice. And the crowd said, no, we want fish and cucumbers and all these good things we had when we were slaves, which is a very strange statement. The crowd becomes a voice. But we know there were surely other voices. We know there are voices that are out loud and there are voices that are quieter. There are voices that people don't always hear. There are the voices that push us to the right thing. There are the voices that take care of one another and they're powerful voices. We see it now when people get agitated, when people are stuck at home, you keep, there's one voice, but it's not the voice of every person. And sometimes those silent voices need to be strong. And one of the things that I... I notice with you is, um, while people who may not know you as much well might say, well, Emily and Dakota are kind of quiet. Once they get to know you, they see your quiet voices. They see it in the way you take care of one another. They see it in the way you have a sense of right and wrong. They see it in an inner strength that beats inside of you, which people can miss when they're too busy running around going, where is the man? Where is the this? When do we get into Israel? But at the end of the day, after all the rebellions are over, it's the quiet people with a faith and a conscience that is rock solid that are there and ready to bring people back the right way. So don't ever lose the voice that is needed when the masses, the masses we may need to be Jews in a community, but then the masses that take on a life of their own, they need the other people who know right and wrong and know the way to go. And so we're going to ask God's blessing upon you, and we're going to ask your parents to come up with the ark with you. And I know they offer this blessing every Shabbat to you, but I get to say the first few words in Hebrew because I'm the rabbi, and it just makes me happy. <laughs> so we're going to ask God's blessing upon you. And those words, if you're following at home in English, you don't have to, but they are on page 603. And these are words that are first spoken according to the Torah um, by Aaron to the people, and his sons, and his sons from generation to generation to the other Jewish people. 
And so we ask, oh God, you will watch over you and protect you and keep you safe and keep you strong and always keep you true to the strong voice of compassion and love and right and wrong that is in your heart. Yevarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Yair Adonai pana ve'lecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai pana ve'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God bless you and watch over you. May God shine his face toward you and show you favor. May God be favorably disposed toward you and grant you peace. Amen. And we continue with Elenu on page 586. <laughs> ונקנו קוראים ומשתחבים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו אחד ביום ביום ההוא Thank you. We're going to turn to page 598 for the Kaddish because we know that even our most joyous occasions and some might say especially our most joyous occasions of celebration are also times of memory as we stand on the shoulders of those before us. We carry on their teachings and their guidance. While there are many on this Shabbat that we remember at this time, uh, we mention the names of Alex Braverman, and we mention the name of your great-grandmother, Phyllis Ertmode, wishing she could somehow see and know at this time and is watching at this moment. And so on page 598, we affirm life as we turn to the Kaddish and we rise as we join together. Yit gadal v'yit gada shemei raba b'alma tivrach yerutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayi chon uv'yomei chon uv'chayi d'chol beit Yisrael v'galal v'zman kariv imru amen yehi shemei raba mevorach le'olam ul'meil maya yit barach v'yit tabach v'yit ba'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit adar v'yit alev v'yit tala Shmeid kudsha brichu, leila min kol birchata v'shirata, tush mechata v'nechamata, dami ram b'alma v'imru, amen. Ehe shlama rabba min shamaya, v'chayim, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. O se shalom b'mrumav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. May the memories of all we have lost Give us strength and be blessings to us as we continue on our lives. And we say, Amen. Uh, and as we continue, uh, normally Howard Bell would be here, but he wanted me to tell you that he knew you'd be amazing, that he is proud of you this day, that he appreciates everything your family does. Your mom is involved with WRJ and other parts of our synagogue and all of you involved in the temple and the school. So there are a number of presentations uh, that are underneath in the um, podium there, and I want to let you know what you're looking at. You are looking at a candlesticks so that wherever you go, you can bring uh, the light of Shabbat to your lives. At the moment, you are at home with your parents, and I know 
You can't imagine that day ending, and maybe it never will. I don't know, certainly not this year. But one day you may be on a campus or in another city or traveling, and a little bit of Bethel will be with you as you bring the light of Shabbat into other lives and other homes. In addition, you've got books. You've got a book from our brotherhood uh, that is a series of prayers and readings. So just like those candlesticks, wherever you are, you have some reflections, some ways to connect Jewishly in any place. There is a bar and a bat mitzvah certificate with your English and Hebrew names and spaces for you and your parents to sign. And there is a tree planted in Israel uh, by 50, our youth group, one for each of you. So you'll see your names. Uh, of course, unless you go soon, the tree will look very different. One day I want to see the tree I planted in. It was just a forest. So there you go. Uh, and finally, um, a certificate. Should you go on a Nifty trip to Israel, the temple also provides through Nifty a certificate to get you started for a high school trip to Israel. And so very proud of you on behalf of the whole synagogue, all the groups that would love to be here today to thank you for all of your gifts. Um, and on that, before we join in our final blessings, uh, we find Ose Shalom, peace, peace above, peace below, the peace you bring to us and all the world as she leads us in singing. Ose Shalom, Vim Ramav, Huya Se Shalom Aleinu, Ve'alko Yisrael, Ve'imeru Amen. Ose Shalom, Say shalom, Aleinu, Ve'akol, Ve'akol, Yisrael, Ve'imeru, Amen. On this joyous day, and before we conclude, and before we wish the family a safe drive home, we want to uh, break bread with you, and although you don't get to have the Cindy Simon challah, they do, Still, we hope you have something nice that you can take out now and make mozi with us. And so as we get that bread ready, I want to call the whole family up so you can see not just their backs, but all of their wonderful faces uh, as, we, uh, as we say this blessing together. I did, but I'll thank you. Cindy, thank you again for providing these challahs. Follow, there's one challah. <laughs> Amen. I want to say thank you to all of our streamers, Carl and Jay and Mark and Jeff, who are working on this service overtime and for bringing it to you. And I want to wish all of you a Shabbat Shalom, a day filled with peace and rest and new ideas and opportunities. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I'm sure. Okay.